Greetings to all our learners. Welcome to CEC lecture. Dear learners, the topic of analysis is Marx's perspective and looking at it with a special focus with reference to international relations. In this lecture, we shall try to analyze key features, main ideas of Marxism with respect to theories and perspectives in international relations. The lecture shall explain issues of global capitalism with respect to state structures in international relations. It shall also present an analysis that how, as a structural theory, Marxist perspectives in international relations, as a paradigm as well in international relations, brings the focus on the economic aspects of capitalism and their relationship with the operation of power in global realms. In the lecture, we shall try to have reflections from the paradigm of our international relations theory, looking at the points of differences and similarities with respect to Marxism and other perspectives in IR like realism. We shall also look at the key ideas presented by the world system theory and the dependency theory. Dear learners, when we talk about Marxist perspective in international relations, it is looked upon as a critical approach. This approach presents an alternative to understanding issues of IR. It questions the mainstream approaches, namely to state here, realism with respect to international relations. When looked at the global arena, the Marxist perspectives in IR, they highlight the economic systems and the processes of capitalism, how they are based on inequality and how the aspects of inequality, domination, exploitation has a bearing with the bigger picture of politics and power struggle in IR. The Marxist perspective in IR, it rejects the realist the liberal views of IR with respect to their you know, respective focus on conflict and cooperation. Rather, it presents a different perspective while questioning the mainstream approaches, critically analyzing power struggle from the perspective of economic processes, global capitalism and situating the state structure therein. When we talk about Marxism, the name of German philosopher Karl Marx with a focus on capitalism, industrial revolution, class struggle is always discussed and debated within political theory, political thought amongst others. Getting the Marxist ideas with respect to international relations Marxist perspective in IR focuses on the unequal effects of capitalism and with the special focus towards the global arena. Now, as we understand the aspects of Marxism, one has to have an insight towards the historical thought also. Karl Marx drew from the work of Hegel, with respect to dialectic idealism, how the entire idea of dialectic idealism with the work of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels was translated into the idea of historical materialism, wherein history was seen in terms of a dichotomy, dichotomy with respect to how the society was always divided into two classes. Yes, class was used as a unit of analysis with respect to the Marxist perspective. Here one has to see that how the base of economics 
for you know gives the foundation to the bigger other superstructure namely of politics culture education society wherein karl marx idea that when we look at the greek time when we look at the roman time when we look at the feudal time when we look at the times of industrial revolution and also when we look at the time of capitalism the society was divided into two classes the haves and the haves not and this was because of the unequal effects of capitalism the marxist ideas with respect to international relations herein we have to see that how unlike realism which as a mainstream theory supports the idea of statism leading to self help and survival marxism on the other hand does not support status quo in international system it accepts that state is an important unit of analysis but within this one cannot ignore that how the state operates within the other processes of capitalism so therefore in international relation the marxist perspective they attempt to look at the bigger picture of transformation through somehow analyzing the processes the prospects of radical change in the prevailing social and political order dear learners so what we are trying to get that as we are analyzing the marxist perspective in international relations it is a critical social theory it is a critical analysis also of capitalist globalization and most important like realism with the focus on the state and power struggle it studies ir on a different note that is through global inequalities and the struggle for power it presents an analysis of studying ir through class conflicts and class which is a unit of analysis in the traditional marxist theory as we read in political thought and political theory class conflict is used as an important aspect with respect to the global arena marxism's essential features as we are seeing that it focuses on class as unit of analysis with respect to ir marxism looks at class struggle within the bigger picture of states in international relations as we have discussed that how historical materialism the work and the ideas of karl marx and friedrich engels they invert the hegelian dialectics contained in historical idealism dialectics which is a process of movement and progress namely signified by thesis antithesis and synthesis this dialectics was translated in the form of a thesis that is the have the antithesis that is the have not and the synthesis of that was class struggle as a basis of power domination now dear learners as we are taking our learning forward we bring the focus towards an important question in our analysis what do we mean by class class when we look at this sociological perspective and as a research methodology tool it has the basis with reference to the idea of an economic group its basis of characteristics is that it is based on the idea of relation to the production process in the society so when used as a research methodology tool of analysis as a variable or as a constant with respect to research focus what we get is two types of class one is the haves that is those who own the means of production the haves not those who do not now when we are looking at the marxist perspectives in international relations when we hear about proletariat internationalism when we hear about anti imperialism and looking at the end that is how end of capitalism because capitalism was 
seen to be propagated by imperialism, how unity of the proletariat can pave out a new picture of global governance. These are all important concepts that we must factor into account while attempting our answers and analysis with respect to Marxian approaches to international relations. Dear learners, an important question that is what do we understand by politics? Politics at any level, be it be domestic or international, it is about continuous struggle between two classes if we take the Marxist perspective. This same idea of politics at international realm, namely international politics, can be seen as a struggle between the capitalist states and those the, that is the others victims of the capitalist exploitations. So therefore global governance in this regard is then seen as that of rich versus poor states. Now the new insights that we get from the Marxist perspectives in IR or the new insights presented by analyzing Marxism in IR that is how the struggle between forces of capitalism, imperialism in the past or perhaps uh, neoliberalism driven globalization, how which was high third to excluded in IR has an important bearing in our analysis of international relations. Similarly, related to it is the idea that is of increased importance of international economic relations. So dear learners, it is very important to understand that when we look at new insights with respect to Marxism in IR, how it broadens the agenda of study of global governance. By taking the focus on not just power struggle with respect to the military perspective, but power struggle as defined with respect to imperialism, plunder of resources in the past or by the processes of capitalism or how the entire machinery of global trade and finance works to the advantage of making some countries rich and other countries poor, thereby bringing the focus on how international economic relations have a bearing on study of IR. Another important insight that Marx's perspective present us in IR that IR is just not about states. When we look at the capitalist mode of production, the modern sovereign state system, interdependent products of particular historical conditions and social relations. How the paradigm of study of IR must include the dynamics of the economic processes, processes which also have a bearing with the social structure and historical conditions of a particular nation state. Similarly, reading from a very important web resource that we get from eirinfo.com that is introducing Marxism in international relations theory that Marxism problematizes on the idea of what is international. How do we understand anarchy? Because somewhere Marxism questions the false images that is how one cannot ignore the structural and regional inequalities. One cannot reduce power struggle to that of military supremacy. One has to factor in the aspects of structural and other related forms of inequality which have been perpetuated by the capitalism as a process. As we are analyzing Marx's perspective in IR, some insights towards the points of difference. Marxist scholars, as we have seen, they do not believe in the idea of status quo because theories like realism and neorealism have been, you know, analyzed as status quo is theory in IR. When we look at the ambit of cooperation, neoliberalism and liberal ideas are very hopeful of cooperation in IR through norms regimes, institutions, but through the lens of the Marxist perspective, when we look at capitalism and its related processes of exploitation, 
cooperation seems tough when we look at national interest also it is defined by through the marxist lens namely that of economic capitalist imperialism similarly when we are looking at the marxist perspective in ir dear learners one must factor in that how over time it has also evolved it has also changed when we look at the work of rosa luxemburg uh, rudolf hyverding vladimir lenin they look at imperialism as an expansion of capitalism focus on inter imperial rivalry and the bigger focus towards the first world war as being caused by imperialism as one of the root causes the focus towards disintegration of the european empires lenin's work that is imperialism the highest stage of capitalism how imperialism created a two tier structure within the capitalist world economy the dominant structure as the core and the less developed structure as the periphery dear learners the next phase in this addition to marx's perspective in international relations theory comes via the world system theory and the dependency theory we first take the world system theory the world system theory was developed by the american sociologist emmanuel wallerstein the world system theory can be seen to be read as an approach to world history and social change it analyzes presents a picture of world economic system wherein some countries benefit at cost of exploitation of other this theory also emphasizes the social structure of global inequality when we look at the focus with respect to the context in ir looking at nations economic system power struggle in ir understood with reference to the world system of which they are part of so therefore how important is that marx's perspective and related other theories like the world system theory it brings into focus the economic realms with respect to dynamics of capitalism as a process in power struggle the world system theory talks about three level of hierarchy namely core periphery and semi periphery wallerstein's very important work that you must uh, refer to for for further study the modern world system capitalist agriculture and the origins of the european world economy in the 16th century 1974 this is indeed a very powerful explanation of the modern world system tracing the emergence of capitalism in the 16th century europe looking at the evolution into a world capitalist system that contained the core the periphery and the semi periphery in terms of the variables of wealth accumulation and economic development the wealthy countries benefited from other countries how integration of a country into the capitalist world system had an impact on the power struggle in ir and also on the economic development in that country the core countries dominate and exploit the peripheral countries for labor and raw material the peripheral countries they are dependent on core countries for capital the semi peripheral countries they share the characteristics of both core and the peripheral countries related to, uh, to the evolution of marxist perspectives in ir is the dependency theory the dependency theory the you know the roots of ideas can be once again linked to the marxist perspective namely economic structuralism economic relationship between economically rich and economically poor states 1950s when we look at the work of the latin american economist rol prebrish studying international relations and issues of development with particular attention to latin american states Theodoro dos Santos you know when reading from his important words from our online search that is dependency is an historical condition which shapes 
a certain social structure of the world economy such that it favors some countries to the detriment of others and this also has an impact that is on the development possibilities of the subordinate economies. So, what we see dependency is a situation in which economy of a certain group of countries is conditioned by the development and expansion of another economy to which their own is subjected. The characteristics of international systems as binaries for example, dominant versus dependent, center versus periphery, metropolitan versus satellite all of it have been covered in various uh, theor theoretical work with respect to the dependency theory. And how dependency works? Namely the core idea economically rich nations they take advantage of the economically poor through their control of the economy. Another important quote that we present to you from our online search uh, for that is a VOT and copy that is low income countries of the south economically subordinated to the advantage of high income countries of the first world or north in class analytical terms. Reading further, workers and peasants subordinated and exploited by capital owning classes the bourgeois. The modernization theory you know because dependency theory is seen to have been the answer to the modernization theory that is increases in technology will increase well throughout the globe and low income nations can follow the path taken by the wealthier modernized nations. The dependency theory because some nations gaining wealth at the expense of other nations especially through colonization counters the narrative of the modernization theory. Important aspects that we must focus on while analyzing the dependency theory and the Marxist perspectives in IR, the work by United Nations Economic Commission for Latin America that was critical of the modernization theory, reliance on exports of food and raw materials, how it had an impact on the deterioration of Latin American terms of trade and what was the way out presented by these terms of reference? Economically poor states should shift their economy towards import substitution. The dependency theory, the focus is on the power of transnational classes and class structures in sustaining the global economy. One must differentiate that the world system, the focus is on the role of the powerful states and the interstate system. Dear learners, as we you know take the lecture forward, we now will be looking at the critical analysis. See, Marxist perspectives in international relations give us important insights about power struggle, capitalist domination, but critiques have also far pointed out which we cannot ignore that it is utopian. It cannot really realistically explain the realities of politics and international issues and above all the bigger debate that one cannot ignore that how states have given up on the Marxist and the socialist ideas, rise of globalization, economic liberalism did pave way for new choices, new jobs, new avenues for global governance. Further, one cannot ignore the dynamics of politics, diplomacy, soft power, military power in the bigger realm of global governance. And then one, how does one account for exploitation of workers that one witnessed in the erstwhile communist and socialist regimes. An important book that we must refer to to elaborate further on our analysis is that by B. N. Ghosh, Dependency Theory Revisited, Routledge 2009. This book was first published in 2001 and it's a critical study of theories of dependency looking at the world work of Paul Baran, A. G. Frank, Samir Amin and the argument that the book presents that phenomenology of dependency is still relevant as a methodology of study of development and underdevelopment. Another important book that we all as must refer for our further research and adding more to our answers and analysis is that of we, Kabul Kowa and Khrushchev that is Marxism, Leninism and Theory of IR, Routledge 2015. It summarizes the work of Marx, Engels, Lenin and above all, it looks at the fundamental, so relooks at the fundamental Soviet concepts, 
but as we also talked about in the lecture national liberation movement peaceful coexistence socialist internationalism proletarian un solidarity amongst others so therefore dear learners in the lecture what we analyze that as Ma the marxist perspective in ir it you know it's a competing theoretical perspective to mainstream stated views it explains questions of global inequalities power struggle global capitalism north south divide however at the other side one cannot look at the contemporary challenges and contemporary realities that have put a big question mark on the viability and usefulness of marxist perspective in ir but nonetheless looking at how issues are contested marxist approach in ir is a useful tool of analysis to present new ideas in ir dear learners thank you very much for being with us for the lecture we hope you all gained significant insights we look forward to positive feedback from you all for the lecture thank you